Well, Desiree, my new best friend, <laughs> came to see me again today after our wonderful journey to Boston. And I don't think either one of us knew what quite God had in store for the entire race. Um, we had been trying to get together <clears throat> to run a little bit and be together before Boston, but our crazy, hectic um, schedules didn't allow us to until we got there. And I was just in awe that God had sent somebody so special to run beside me, and she'd given up so much to be able to be there, and she said she just felt like God was telling her for some reason to be there to support me. And after um, what happened, I know why he had her there, because I couldn't have made it without her. And um, I think we developed a friendship that is going to carry us for our lifetime. Anyways, we got there on Saturday and tried to meet up and weren't allowed to, or the schedules weren't allowed, so Sunday we decided we'd meet at the expo. And so we met at the expo, and when I saw her, I just felt like I'd known her my whole life because we had been emailing back and forth and the ideas of what we could do maybe with the foundations together and for children and the run and how special it's going to be and we're going to run for Skylar. And um, we went to the chiropractor right when I saw her. I'd gotten a call from a chiropractor that said he would be able to let me in um, because my lower back was feeling a little out of place and my leg was bothering me a little bit nothing too alarming, just I wanted to be in perfect alignment. <clears throat> so we went there and I got adjusted and he reassured me it's probably just my IT band and another muscle on the other side that was a little tight, but I was good to go. So Monday morning we meet and um, we get on the buses at 6.45 in the morning and there we head. Um, to the place and she comes with this huge bag of stuff and she said she's going to run with this bag of stuff for me. It's like all this salt and all the goos and a camera. She's going to take pictures while we run. And I mean, it's a bag bigger than what I could just walk with. And I said, you're going to run with that? All of us were like, you're going to run with that? Well, she's so amazing. Of course, she just ran the whole race holding it <laughs> and taking pictures and not only helping me, but helping so many people that were hurting. I don't know she was truly an angel on the course. Um, she saved so many people that were so dehydrated and it was really hot. It was super hot. <laughs> Anyways, when we got there, we had the purple bands, and I had a thousand of these. So we're like, we've got to get these out. So she's like, maybe we can get on all the buses and tell them about it all. So we get on the buses and um, we introduce ourselves, and of course, people. Um, know Desiree and so I think that catches their attention and then I would begin and tell them about Skylar and how we are racing for her and we want to put our foundations together and support children and hers was for cancer and um, research and mine was for um, children in the Central Texas region. And so both of us I think said how their faces just softened. Like people are a little intense you know and then We'd hand them the bands, and I'll ask if they wanted them, and it seemed like it brought a piece on the buses as we'd pass them out, and wherever we'd go. And I remember Desiree would say, now when it gets hard, just remember, you know, to pray for Skylar. And um, little do we know, I think at the end, you know, that we would be praying so hard for me just to be able to complete the race. And... People were yelling, go Skylar, go, at the end of the race, because that's my shirt said Skylar's finish line, and I was in such agonizing pain at the end, they thought I was Skylar, and so they were saying, go Skylar, go, and encouraging me and praying for me. Um, so, let's see, mile six, I started having a little pain in my leg, but nothing too alarming, and... Um, Desiree, I had surrendered my watch. I said, I just want, I didn't really care about the time. I just wanted it to be a joyful run and a run for our foundation and the first run we experienced together. And she, um, and then so at mile six, Desiree says, you're, you're really on track for a PR. And I said, really? She said, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Do you want to know your time? I don't want to know my time. I just want to run. 
Mile 13, the same. I felt good, but I was having a little pain. Um, and I took an Aleve, half of an Aleve painkiller. And I um, thought, you know, because my IT band's real tight, I better take that, which I never take painkillers. Um, but I thought maybe it'll just ease a little bit of the tension, so I took a half of it. Thanks, Scott. You're okay. And at that hey, point... Yeah. We're filming, we're filming. Oh. <laughs> at, wait, can you stop it one second? Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi. They're filming. Okay. Oh, Your mom so would have made her bring What is... Okay. Oprah okay. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Just leave that in there, that's fine. Okay, well, I'll, I'll kind of give, we're laughing so hard that we forgot where we were in our story. So, back to serious story. Yeah, mile <laughs> six. Mile six. Then mile 13, I was still feeling good. I'd taken half of an Aleve, <clears throat> oh, yeah. which maybe masked more of the pain, I don't know. But, anyways, mile 17, the pain starts getting really <clears throat> bad and still at this point she said, Ty, you're on track to do it. Oh, oh is there? <laughs> okay. It was like it stung. No protein. <laughs> and um, so uh, she said, you're still on track to do a PR, but by this point my leg's hurting really bad. And um, by mile 20 I was thinking, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I guess it's just my IT band's really tight and this other muscle, so it's pulling on my leg really hard and at that point, um, she she did several things that really helped me. One was, she, at mile 13 actually, she said, follow me. And, because um, I was really hot, because it was one of the top 10 hottest years in 116 years of the Boston Marathon. And she got in front of me, and she said, just focus on this one part of my back, and just follow me. And that those words stuck in my heart, because I felt like so many times in life when God's saying things, get difficult to just follow me and um, it's almost like I was I don't know, double imagery of God saying when things get hard and that's actually the situation I'm in now just focus on me and don't look what could be ahead or to the side and so I just followed her and it just kept me on such a smooth pace to mile 17 and at that point you know then she continued to start praying with me and we prayed the verse from Isaiah that says, They shall mount wings like eagles. And as kind of hard, please just give me the wings of your eagles to get me across the line. Um, the pain was very, very severe. She also, the entire race, was giving me salt, which I have never have taken salt ever in a race. In a half Ironman, in anything, I've always just done goo. And it's another kind of imagery that came back to me that God said we're the salt of the earth and um, we're to bring light and I just feel like he's brought our lives together whatever this leads to but to bring salt and light to his earth to people and to hurting children um, so all of that's going through my mind and I am in a lot of pain mile 23 um, I remember thinking there's these last three miles are never going to end. I don't know if I can make it. And I we continued to pray for Skylar. We prayed for my little daughter, Talia, that had also uh, broken her foot that night. And my husband, because we heard the break was really bad, had to fly out before the marathon to rescue her. Um, another reason why I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have Desiree by my side. Um, <clears throat> And the other thing that was going through my mind is I was thinking about her, and she has a broken foot, and Skylar, who's had this awful surgery and endured so much, so maybe I'm just having a little glimpse of pain that some children go through. And um, so we prayed and prayed and prayed, and I truly feel God did give me the wings to get to the finish line, because when I finally crossed, when I thought the finish line would never come, um, I couldn't take another step out. And I remember they brought the wheelchairs up and they said, well, can you walk? Can you get in the wheelchair? And I couldn't move. And then I was stuck. If I put any pressure on the leg, I was going to collapse. So um, that's from that point. And I got there. And I feel that now when children are really trying to look for a finish line, I'll never forget the pain that I went through to get there. 
but that he brought somebody very special beside me to get me there because I wouldn't have made it without her. And, and he does the same for us here. And the children, when they're seeking with all of their heart for a finish line to make it, um, hopefully we can be there and, and draw more ideas from this whole experience that we've had on how to really help them have the hope and an inspiration to get to their finish line. So anyways, then I'll let her tell the really fun part from here on. <laughs> we became even closer after this. <laughs>